In this video, we're going to go through three different kinds of examples involving writing the standard form of the equation of a hyperbola when you're given certain bits and pieces, like maybe you're given the vertices and the foci or the asymptotes or like a point on the hyperbola, just some various information. So I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about hyperbolas in this video, and then we're going to kind of take it you know, to writing the equations, but we'll go through it as we go through some of the different examples, some of the key components of hyperbola. So let's dive into this first example and we'll kind of talk about it as we go. We're just given the vertices and the foci and we want to write the equation, right? So let's draw a graph. I always recommend just drawing a graph. It doesn't have to be like perfect or anything, but just so that you can kind of see what's going on. So 2, 4 and 6, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, is right about here. So these are our vertices, and then our foci are at 1, 4, so I'll label that F for foci, and 7, 4 right here, F. So what that tells us, just by graphing these points, is that we can see that our hyperbola is going to be opening like to the right and the left, okay, like that. And so what that tells us is that it's going to be in this form here where the x squared term is the positive term. It comes first. If it was opening up and down like this one here, then the y squared term would be written first. And what we can do now is we can find the center point right here, which is halfway between the vertices. It's also halfway between the foci. You could use your midpoint formula, or if you have a good graph, you can just you know, count. But let's just do the midpoint. So 2 plus 6 is 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 plus 4 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. So that means that our center is at 4, 4. Now, when I like to write these equations, I kind of like to piece it together as I go. What I mean by that is, I know this is going to be x minus the x coordinate of the center, minus y minus our y coordinate of the center, okay, squared. It always equals 1 for hyperbolas and ellipses, right? But what we have to figure out now are the a squared and the b squared. Now, what does the a squared represent? Well, the a is the distance from the center to the vertex. So this is your a. And in this case, you can see that's from 4, 4 to 6, 4. So you can see we're going uh, two units. So our a value is equal to 2. Let's write that down. Now, the distance from the center to the foci, that distance is c. So c is going to be from... Uh, 4, 4 to 7, 4, so that's a distance of 3. And B is this distance here, okay, when we draw that rectangle, we use the corners of the rectangle to draw our asymptotes. That distance there is B, but there's a formula you want to memorize for hyperbolas, and that's C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So in this case, to solve for B, we have C squared is equal to A squared, which is 2 squared. Uh, plus b squared uh, is equal to c squared, and c squared we know is 3, so let's uh, change this to 3 squared. So that comes out to 9 equals 4 plus b squared. Subtract 4 from both sides, and you can see that b squared is equal to 5. So we can see in our equation here, b squared is 5, a squared is 2 squared, which is 4, and you've got the equation of your hyperbola in standard form. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, example number two is a little bit different in the sense that they're giving us the vertices and a point that the hyperbola passes through. So how do we get the standard form of the equation of this hyperbola? Again, I would recommend drawing a sketch. We've got the point negative one, three, which is gonna be one of our vertices, and the other one is at negative one, negative seven, which is right about here. And you can see that the point that it's going through is 1, 4, right about here. So what this tells us is that the graph's going to be opening in the, what I like to call the y direction, basically up and down, okay, in this vertical direction, which means it's going to be in this form right here, where the y squared term comes first. It's the positive term. So the next thing I'd like to do is maybe find the center point, and the center is halfway between the vertices. So you can use the midpoint formula, or you can just count on your graph. So it looks like this is gonna be at negative one, uh, negative four divided by two would be negative two. So basically just add the x's and divide by two, add the y's and divide by two. That's our center. Now, because it's in this form, I would like to start putting it together. So I've got y minus the y coordinate of the center. So that's gonna be y minus negative two or y plus two squared minus 
x minus the x coordinate of the center, so that's going to be x minus a negative 1, which is x plus 1 squared, and hyperbola is always equal 1. Remember the distance from the center to the vertex, that distance we call a, okay, distance from the center to the vertex, and so that is going to be a squared as our denominator here. a is the distance from, let's see, negative 2, okay, to negative 7, that's a distance of 5. So our a value is equal to 5, so 5 squared is going to be 25. All we have to do now is solve for our b squared, and that's where this point comes in to play. So we know it goes through the point 1, 4. If 1, 4 is a point on our equation here on our graph, uh, then it's going to make this equation true, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to place 1 for x, and we're going to put 4 in for y, and we're going to solve for our b squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I put 4 here and 1 here, what do we get? We get 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 squared is 36 over 25 minus 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so that's 4 over b squared is equal to 1. Now 1 is like 1 over 1, right? So what we could do here is we could actually clear the denominators by multiplying through by the common denominator, which is 25b squared. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply our whole equation by 25b squared. If we do that here, this is going to come out to 36b squared. This is going to come out to minus 100, because you can see the b squareds cancel, 25 times 4, and this is going to come out to 25b squared. So if I subtract 36b squared from both sides to get the variables on one side, numbers on the other, that's going to come out to negative 100 is equal to negative 11b squared. Divide both sides by negative 11. So you can see that b squared is coming out to 100 elevenths. So we can replace b squared with 100 elevenths, or when you put 100 elevenths in here, when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So if we want to write this kind of as a neat form of the standard form of the equation of our hyperbola, this would really look like 11x plus 1 squared over 100 equals 1. Or if you don't like that, you could just write the 100 elevenths in the denominator, and it's okay to have that fraction there, but this is just a little bit kind of rewritten, a little bit neater. So let's take another look at a different example in number three. Before we dive into example number three, if you're enjoying my channel and you come back to see my videos now and again, consider supporting the channel by joining as a channel member. For a few dollars a month, you can help support the content that I'm putting up here, and I really appreciate it. Let's take a look at this last example, though. See if you can do this one on your own. This one's a little bit different than the first two in the sense that they're giving us the asymptotes and the vertices. So how do we find the standard form of the equation of this hyperbola? Again, I would start by drawing a, a little sketch so we can see 1, negative 2 is right here, and negative 3, negative 2 is right here. So those are our vertices. And we know that the center is halfway between the two vertices. So you can do your midpoint formula, or you can just count. So in this case, it looks like it's going to be at negative 1, negative 2. So it's just halfway between. And we know that this hyperbola is going to be opening in the horizontal direction, or what I like to call the x direction. So it's going to be in this form right here. So now what we're going to do is let's go, see, go ahead and graph the asymptote. So y equals 2x is uh, going to be going through the origin and it has a slope of 2. So rise 2, run 1. And the asymptotes will also pass through the center point of the you know, hyperbola, so that's important. And then over here, the y-intercept is negative 4. Uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it has a slope of negative 2, so that's going to be going something like, uh, like this. Okay, so now we have a rough sketch here, and you can see that the um, hyperbola is going to look something like this, where it approaches those asymptotes. Okay, roughly like that. So let's go ahead and piece together what we have so far. So we know it's in this form. We know the center. So this is going to be x minus negative 1, or you could say x plus 1 squared, minus y minus negative 2, or you could say y plus 2 squared equals 1. And remember, the distance from the center to the vertex, that distance is a. In this case, that distance is uh, 2. So a squared is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. 
and then all we're left to solve for is b squared. Now this is something that you might want to make note of when you're finding the um, asymptotes, the ratio of the number underneath the y divided by the number underneath the x is going to be the slope of your asymptote. Now you'd have to take the square root of these. So it's going to be, when it's in this form, it's going to be a slope is b over a. When it's in this form here, it's going to be a over b. The way I like to think of it is the change in y over the change in x, okay, is the slope, right? And so that's why I think the number underneath the y over the number underneath the x is going to give me my slope of my asymptote. Same thing over here, the number underneath the y, b, over the number underneath the x, a, so b over a. So in this case, b over a, which is going to be b over 2, because a was 2, is equal to the slope of our asymptote, which is uh, 2, plus or minus 2, really. And so now when we cross multiply here, b times 1 is b, and it equals plus or minus 4. But we're looking for b squared, so plus or minus 4 squared is going to be 16, negative 4 times negative 4, or positive 4 times positive 4, and that's our standard form of the equation of our hyperbola. Now, if you want to see more examples with hyperbolas, ellipses, circles, parabolas, check out my conic um, video right there where I go into more depth about all the different conic sections. Follow me to that video and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.